Welcome back. Carrying her New York accent around with pride, children's book author and Bronx native Janelle Harper remains passionate about representation. Her latest book, My Block Looks Like, champions diversity and inclusion, showcasing and amplifying the different voices that make up a community. The author now joins me to discuss the book and the importance of representation in stories made for children. Janelle, thank you so much for joining me. Thank you so much for having me. Now, I'm excited to learn. This book sounds amazing. It sounds like a book that I wish I had when I was younger. You know, before we get into talking about the book, I'm curious to know what led you on the path towards creating a children's book? So I've always been a storyteller. Um, I started dancing at the age of four, so that's 35 years. I'm not afraid to tell my age. <laughs> and um, so dance is essentially storytelling through the body and movement. But as a child growing up in school, my favorite subject was definitely English and writing and reading. And so when the pandemic happened in 2020, like everyone else trying to figure out, you know, what's next and really reflecting on what I really value, um, I reignited my passion for writing and then I was able to connect it back to storytelling and my passion for children. Now, what inspired the creation of My Block Looks Like? So the inspiration behind My Block Looks Like is twofold. So I was a teacher for about 17 years um, in public schools and I taught dance and so it was always important for me to make sure my curriculum represented the children I saw in my classroom. And so one of the styles of dance I always uh, taught was hip hop, um, being that the children were from the Bronx, I was teaching in the Bronx. And something that always astounded me was when we talked about the history and social context behind the dance, the students rarely ever knew that it began in their barrel. And I was like, wow, they don't know how many amazing things and places exist within their barrel. And I just thought about my experience being a child of the Bronx and how many great memories I had, but then thinking about how often people who weren't a part of the community would have misconceptions or negative perceptions about our, our barrel. And so for me, my block looks like was a love letter to all the amazing people, places, and things within our community, and also was a way to take back our narrative about who we are and who we know we are. Now, if anybody knows the Bronx, like people from the Bronx are so uh, colorful, and there's just <laughs> you know there's just so much personality mm -hmm. in the Bronx. And as a Bronx native, you know, how did you make sure that you kind of captured that essence and put it inside the book? Oh, I thought about all my favorite things. So the Icy Man is in there. I thought about all my memories after school running to the Icy Man, the open hydrants in the summer, the pickup games, the subway and the subway performers. And of course, because we're the birthplace of hip hop, there's, you know, um, paying homage to hip hop throughout the book as well. Now, you know, like hearing this, I think it's, it's amazing because I think about some of the stories that I read um, and usually maybe it would be taking place in a suburb or mm -hmm. if it wasn't a city, it was in a certain part of the city that I wasn't from, mm -hmm. you know, how do you think that this could possibly help, you know, a child um, develop a little bit of self-confidence and, you know, where they come from? Yeah, so representation in books uh, truly matter because it allows children to feel seen, to feel valued. Um, to be seen and to be heard. And it also opens their possibilities of what's possible and allows them to dream bigger. I don't know what's possible for my life and myself if I don't have examples of it. And so representation in books are really important. Now, you're known for being passionate about representation. You know, I'm curious to know what sparked that, uh, that passion or when did you realize this was something that you kind of wanted to work a little bit further into? Um, I think just growing up as a little, you know, black child, dark skinned child, and just realizing that I had hard times finding representation of myself in media and in books and just being a teacher in the classroom and knowing I wanted something more for my uh, students. I also consider them my children, so sometimes I go back and forth to say my children. Um, but. I know how important it is to see someone who looks like you. Um, and so I just wanted to write books that helped children to feel seen and to feel heard and to feel valued and loved. Now, I want to talk a little bit about some of the events that you have uh, coming up. You know, can you talk about the Golden Runway event? Yes. So that um, 
event is a part of New York Fashion Week, and it's a charity event. And Golden Runway, they do it annually. And uh, this year, they're championing the cause of uh, children's heart disease, so that's what they're focusing on. But they have children models, they have children performers, and I'll also be there uh, representing and doing a story time. Oh, that's amazing. Can you talk a little bit, you know, we talked about reading today and how it's so important. Uh, you know, how did it um, happen that, you you know, you were going to pair reading um, in, a, in a place like with fashion? Uh, can you talk about the importance of even like kind of putting those two things together? Yes. So the, um, the founder, Frances, she actually follows me on Instagram and she learns about the book and she was just like, this has to happen at this event, um, this book you know, represents the children that are participating. The parents need to know about it. You are um, representing New York City. And so it was just a collaboration in that regard. Now, we've been doing so much in regard to improving representation in books, mm -hmm. in different forms of media. You know, what do you think we can do to keep that momentum going and to ensure that, like, we're continuing to represent more children, especially those from marginalized communities? Yeah, for sure. Um, some tangible ways is supporting diverse um, authors and illustrators and, you know, not during just like Black History Month, but throughout, you know, the year so that, you know, publishing houses know that there is a need and desire for these books. Um, going to your local library, checking out the books or going to your bookstore. Um, as parents and community members going to the school board meetings, going to community boards and really, you know, investigating what kind of curriculum our children are learning and are they reflected in the curriculum. And another thing I always encourage people is to go out and vote represent, you know, um, representatives that we believe are going to advocate for what's best for our children. Now, how has your background in education influenced the way you tell stories made for children? Um, I feel like I approach storytelling and creating books the same way I did um, in the classroom, which is just recognizing that children are whole human beings. And I know that seems like, duh, of course, but as adults, I think sometimes we forget they're not just like a blank canvas that we superimpose our thoughts onto and that they're not like mini clones of like the adults in their lives. Like they bring their own life experiences. They bring their own perspective, their own desires. And um, it's important for us to value that. And especially with this movement of book banding under the disguise of we're trying to, to protect the children, I think we're not giving our kids enough credit as critical thinkers, that they're able to draw their own conclusions, they're able to analyze the world. Uh, you know, I want to agree with that. I think that a lot of people think kids are, like, they don't understand things, mm -hmm. and they do understand. Yes. Um, and so many studies have shown that um, when there isn't representation or they don't see themselves, they may not verbally say it, but they are affected mm -hmm. by that, and they do notice that. So That's I right. agree 100%. Now, how do you highlight or explore non-traditional storytelling structures in your work? Yes, so my block looks like it's actually written in verse. Um, and so just being a young girl growing up in the Bronx and growing up with hip hop in the 80s and 90s, like I was just, it appeals to me so much like that poetic, lyrical language. And so I bring that a lot into my writing style as well. That's amazing. And, and you know, what is the, I mean, why did you want to go maybe a non-traditional route? You know, what, what kind of made you say like, hey, I want to try something new. And, and what gave you the courage to actually try something new? Yeah, so it just felt like what was authentic to me growing up in the Bronx and also just being of the African diaspora. Our storytelling is very different than, you know, other Western forms. Um, but representation is what gave me the courage. So thinking of people like Kwame Alexander, and Elizabeth Acevedo and Jason Reynolds, or people who play with, you know, um, non-traditional storytelling and also write in verse, seeing that representation, even as an adult, gave me the courage and the confidence to write. Now, how has your relationship with books and reading evolved from someone who grew up just reading books to now somebody who creates books? Um, I think it's evolved and also helped me just to always remember that child. Um, within me, like what kind of books I wanted to see that I unfortunately didn't see. And so just keeping that in mind as I write stories. Now, can you talk about how books like My Block Look Like 
looks like. It's part of a larger mission to provide equitable education and resources for black and brown children. Yes, so when we talk about like equity within the classroom and schools, like what we're really talking about is making sure we are providing and fostering like the best, you know, environment, tools, skills, um, for the children to do their best learning and have their best learning outcomes. And a part of that is making sure that the curriculum is diverse and represents the experiences and the culture that we see in the classroom. So books like My Block Looks Like and other diverse books help children to be seen and help them to be invested in their learning. Well, first I want to say congratulations on creating a book and kind of like getting it out there because I know that cannot be an easy <laughs> process. But what are your next steps as an author? Do you plan to possibly make another children's book? Do you want to highlight another demographic? You know, what are, what are your next steps and, you know, what are some future plans? Um, so I am definitely going to continue writing. Um, publishing is so secretive, so it's things I can't, you know, exactly announce. But I'm definitely going to continue writing. I'm definitely going to continue telling stories for children who look like the kids in my school, in my community, and my family. And I'm definitely also um, going to continue working with different nonprofits like um, the Bronx is Reading, Locked and Lit, and Bronx Bound Books to do author visits. And so that um, children have those experiences as well. I think this is also amazing that you said author visits because it's one thing to create the book, mm -hmm. um, but to let a child know that like they can actually like meet the author mm -hmm. and speak to the person who wrote the book. You know, maybe why was it important for you to kind of be visible to the kids as well? Like you said, it just makes it more tangible when they see you in front of them and then they get to ask you questions and it's so fun. They're like, are you famous? I'm like, <laughs> I'm from the same neighborhood as you. And they're like, oh, okay. And then you get to tell them, you know, if you're a storyteller or if you like drawing and illustrating, you can do this, you know, in the future. And it's like, you see the light bulb go off and the wheel start turning, so yeah. I think that's amazing. I, I love to hear that because I think a lot of people as children think, uh, you know, we see these books and you do think that, oh my, these are famous people and they're rich <laughs> and they're not from the same neighborhood <laughs> that I'm from. And it's like, no, they are from the same neighborhood and you can achieve this you mm -hmm, know, accomplishment absolutely. as well. So, you know, I think this is an amazing thing. I'm so glad Thank this book was created you. and I hope that we have more books like this um, in the future. Where can you just let people know where can they go to like learn a little bit more about you um, and more about the events that are coming up? Absolutely. So on social media, um, I am at BX Storyteller, and my author website is JanelleHarperAuthor.com. All right. Well, I want to thank you so much thank for joining you us. Thank you so much for having me. To find out more about the new children's book, What My Blog Looks Like, please go to her website at www.JanelleHarperAuthor.com, or to keep up with Janelle, please follow her on social media at BX Storyteller. We've come to the end of our show today. I'd like to thank all of our guests for joining us and you, the viewers, for tuning in. If you missed any part of today's show, you can catch the Rehable cast at 5 and 10 p.m. on the Optimum Channel 67 and Verizon Fios Channel 33, or watch anytime on the web at bronxnet.org. You can catch a brand new episode of Open with Darren Jaime on Wednesday and with Rena Valentine on Friday. I'm Kim and Aline, wishing you and yours safety and wellness now and always. See you next time.